Hi everyone, and welcome to this Critters Tutorial Byte for Oxygen Not Included. As always, make sure to check out the Critters Tutorial Byte if you haven't already for an overview of the critter and ranching mechanics. In this Critter Tutorial Byte, we're looking at Divergence, which is the group name for Sweetles and Grub Grubs. They are only found in the Spaced Out DLC, but are surprisingly useful critters. Sweetles and Grub Grubs naturally live in wasteland biomes, also unique to the Spaced Out DLC with their sulphur food and grub fruit plants. And I'm going to go straight into their details. Sweetles are the blue beetle-like critter that could be considered an early form of the Grub Grub. They live to 75 cycles old and will lay both Sweetle and Grub Grub eggs. The Sweetle and Grub Grub's livable temperature range is minus 30 to 70 degrees Celsius, so safe for dupes. There are a few reasons to ranch Sweetles, and the first is to make Grub Grubs, which happens when they tend to grub fruit plants, but they are also a reasonable way to make meat for barbecue. Although they only drop 1,600 kilocalories of meat on death, which is half of a hatch or slickster, they do lay eggs slightly more quickly. Plus they eat sulphur, which can be made sustainably. After eating the sulphur, they excrete sucrose, which has a number of uses itself, and so is another reason to ranch them. It is an ingredient in grub fruit preserve, an early game rocket fuel, and is the best food for feeding grub grubs to make mud. Moving on to grub grubs then, these large green worm-like critters live longer than sweetles, up to 150 cycles, and need more space in ranches. They drop more meat too, but lay fewer eggs, meaning overall they make the same amount of meat as a hatch or slickster. But they have other advantages too, and can rub plants to give them a 50% growth boost. This can reduce the amount of fertilising material, or the number of plants required by a third for the same output. Note that sweetles can also rub, but they only give a small 5% boost. The other reason you might want to ranch grub grubs is for mud production, which can then be turned into dirt and water in the sludge press. To do this, they really need to be fed sucrose, produced by sweetles, as when they do they excrete all of the mass as mud, compared to only 10% when fed sulphur. Both sweetles and grub grubs are easy to move, and can be wrangled by dupes to be taken to a critter drop-off. Looking at the ranches then, a sweetle ranch is very straightforward, and is exactly the same as a hatch ranch. There's the ranch itself with a door and tile design, incubators, and an evolution chamber. I explained all of these in the hatch critter tutorial bite, so make sure to watch that for a full explanation. The only difference here is that the critter feeder needs to be set to accept sulphur to feed the sweetles. Set the critter drop off to 8 sweetles, and the auto sweeper will remove the eggs and sucrose made. But if you can ranch hatches, then you can ranch sweetles. A grub grub ranch though needs to be in a stable room with grub fruit plants in. At the maximum 96 tile size, it can accept 6 grub grubs and as many grub fruit plants as you want to fit inside. These plants will get a 50% growth bonus from the grub grubs, and the grub grub egg chances will increase over time too. This is also the way to make grub grubs when starting with sweetles. The spindly grub fruit, found in the Divergence Wasteland biome, gets a special bonus from Divergence. When these are rubbed, they become normal grub fruit plants that give slightly better food output. I will cover these in more detail in their own plant tutorial bite. Another important thing here is to make sure that the entire ranch is covered by auto sweepers and loaders to remove any eggs produced. They can also be used to fertilise the plants from receptacles, collect the plants harvest, and collect the mud excreted by the grub grubs. Think carefully about solid shipping with this build, as there are quite a few materials to consider. The main ranch will make grub grub eggs, mud, and grub fruit, the evolution chamber will make eggshells and meat, and the incubators will make eggshell. That's four outputs, so I've used three solid filters to split this, but you can design this as you like. Just make sure that the extra grub grub eggs are removed from the ranch. For a complete guide to solid shipping, see the dedicated tutorial bite. On the topic of mud, this is useful as you can turn it into water and dirt in the sludge press, both of which are themselves very useful, and the amount made depends on whether the grub grubs are fed sulphur or sucrose. Here are some examples of how you could feed divergence based on a single sulphur geyser. If you are ranching grub grubs only for their rubs, then feeding them sulphur will get you the most grub grubs, but you will get the most overall 
by feeding the sulphur to Sweetles, then using the sucrose they make for grub grubs, because you get more critters and much more mud. Of course if you do it this way, then you will need many more ranches and ranches for all the Sweetles. Note that each grub grub eats the sucrose output of three Sweetles. However you feed them, a grub grub ranch will make extra critters, which you can then have dupes take from the incubators to use in other farms. This is done with a critter drop off set to priority 8, and I would recommend one grub grub for each 5 plants. If you do this, then set the evolution chamber critter drop off priority to 7, so they get dropped into the farms first. You could keep them fed in these ranches, but they will slowly over time turn back into sweetles without grub root plants to tend. If not, then you can simply let them starve and replace them from the main grub grub branches, but they may give fewer rubs if not fed. Be careful both here and in the grub grub branches that they can only rub plants in farm or hydroponic tiles, not planter boxes, and they need a flat floor. Plus they will only rub plants that can be harvested, so not decorative plants or oxyferns or weaseworts. The last topic to touch on then is getting the key divergent food of sulphur. This is found naturally in wasteland biomes and can be dug up to get started. But the Spaced Out DLC also introduced sulphur geysers as a sustainable source. Taming these is quite unique and something I touched on in the geysers tutorial bite. Sulphur geysers produce liquid sulphur at 165 degrees Celsius and we need to cool this to a solid for the ranches. This happens at 105 degrees. Here is a useful build with the geyser inside a steam room that can cool down to 125 degrees. The liquid sulphur is pumped out into a second area where a cooling loop solidifies it as well as cooling the steam turbine. For more information on how to make a cooling loop, see the cooling tutorial bite. Here I've set the pipe thermosensor to above 20 degrees Celsius. The sulphur can then be collected and sent to the ranches, either manually or with solid shipping. Do make sure that the solid sulphur is at a suitable temperature, and cool further if necessary. An average sulphur geyser will make enough sulphur to feed 45 sweetles or 18 grub grubs. The other source of sulphur worth mentioning is sour gas boilers. These are advanced designs that I explained in the Rome tutorial bite, linked in the card. A 10 kg per second of oil input will produce 3.3 kg per second of sulphur, enough to feed a huge 100 sweetles and 33 grub grubs from their sucrose, or 40 grub grubs directly from the sulphur. Just remember to heat it up as it comes out very cold. And that's it for this guide to divergence in oxygen not included. I hope this helps with these useful little critters, and thanks for watching.